Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video we are going to discuss Android Debug Bridge, or in short just ADB, to remind you what's going on when we develop and deploy our apps. So we take the source code and convert it during the build process into APK files, and then those APK files are being distributed to end devices. And the standard distribution channel for Android is of course Google Play, but it doesn't have to be just Google Play. For example, if your company deploys applications onto uh, company-owned devices, so-called kiosk applications, then your distribution channel will probably be a little bit different. Either way, we deploy APKs to end devices and then they install those APKs to convert them into runnable, executable applications. And this approach works great for end devices for our users, but as developers, that would be too complex and too slow of an approach to use when we just develop our applications, of course, because when we develop them, we might need to deploy applications tens of times a day, and this process is just you know too complex, too slow for us. And therefore, what we would like to do as developers is to develop our app and then just you know deploy it onto our test devices without going through any third-party service or platform. And of course, the deployment can be done wire, for example, over USB or wireless uh, over Wi-Fi. So that's what we would like to do as developers. And luckily for us, there is a tool that allows us to do that. And the tool is called Android Debug Bridge, ADB. The main components of Android Debug Bridge are ADB server that is running on your development machine and ADB client that talks to the server. So server is the company that actually interacts with the end devices and the client is the common line utility that you use to interact with the server. And then on end devices, we have ADB daemon running in order to support this communication between your development machine and the device itself. And of course, you are not limited to one to one communication. You can have one to many communication and therefore you can interact with multiple connected devices at once. So just to remind you that ADB only works when you enable USB debugging in your developer options. So if you don't know how to do that, just Google it. It's very simple, but that's the precondition to using ADB and therefore, for example, even if you use Android Studio and you want to install your applications from Android Studio, under the hood, Android Studio also uses ADB and therefore you will need to enable this option on your development device anyway. So I kind of assume that you know how to do that. All right, that's what ADB is at a very high level. And now I would like to jump into the shell and show you some interesting ADB comments that some Android developers just don't know, but I use them quite uh, often. All right, just a preliminary note that in order to use ADB command, and in my case, that will be ADB XZ because I'm using Windows subsystem for Linux. If you're just using Linux or Mac, you don't need to add this XZ extension. So in order to use this command right away, oh, not that, uh, what I wanted to do is do which ADB XZ. So in order to use ADB command, you need to make sure that the path to this command is added to your general path inside your shell. If you don't know how to do that, just Google it for your specific uh, development machine. I already did that and therefore I can just do adb.xz and access adb command. Now, as you see, adb is quite a complex tool because it has all these configuration options and all these comments. We're not going to cover all of them. I just want to show you some of my favorites. All right, let's start our quick demonstration. I want to, first of all, find all the APKs here inside my applications uh, working directory. So that's the APK that I want to install and I have no clue why I also have this APK. I haven't built it intentionally. But anyways, that's the one that I need. And let's say I want to install it right now. So the installation command is install and I just grab the path to this APK and install it on my device. But ADB says more than one device or emulator. In order to just check which devices are connected, now I will do ADB devices and I get two devices and these are their serial numbers. Now, this output doesn't give you that much information, especially if you have many devices connected and emulators, etc. And therefore, I usually use a more uh, interesting command, which is adb devices and then dash l. And this gives you more information so you can see the model number and then differentiate your devices based on the model number and not just some opaque ID. Now, if I would like to route adb commands to a specific device, I can do this dash s and then provide the serial number. And then once again, I just pass this command to install my APK and it says perform extreme install and success. 
Alternatively, many developers don't know that you can use this transport ID. So instead of doing adb.exe and then dash s serial number, I will do dash t and then just specify the transport ID for my device. So that will be six in this case, six. And then again, the same command. And of course, specifying transport ID is simpler than specifying the entire uh, serial number. So that's what I usually use. Another very handy command that I often use with ADB is ADB locket. Now you also have access to locket in Android Studio, but sometimes, okay, more than one device formulator, just like before I'll do this locket and you will use locket mostly from Android Studio, but in some cases you might want to do it like this and get the output of the locket inside your terminal. Now, this actually form is not very useful. As you see, it just prints a lot of garbage, but what you might want to do is to capture the locket after something happened. So for example, you've had some crash and you didn't capture it from your Android Studio, maybe your device wasn't connected to Android Studio at that time, and you would like to go back and capture the locket of this. So you can do the following locket and then dash D, and throw it into some file. Let's call it locket.txt. So dash D stands for uh, dump, and this basically just dumps the entire contents of the locket buffer into this file. And then we can, of course, open this file and see what's going on here. Yeah, the file is very large because there's a lot of logging going on, but in many cases, this is actually very beneficial for you because you would like you know, to go back and understand what happened sometimes over the span of like, minutes or sometimes hours or sometimes days. So that's the comment to dump the locket into a file that you can then use or send to someone else. Okay, now very handy ADB comment, something that ADB allows you to do is to connect to um, basically the shell of the running device. So I'll do just ADB shell and now I'm logged into the device, the target device that I'm testing my application on. And here I'm basically getting access to its internal kind of Linux shell. It's not entirely Linux. There are many tools that missing for this shell to be kind of full fledged, fully featured Linux shell, but it does support some of the Linux commands. So for example, I can do LS, first of all, PWD and I'm at the root and then LS to list all LS dash L to list everything that we see here. And please notice that most of the stuff inside my device is owned by the root user. And if I do who am I, so I'm not root, I am logged into as a shell user. And therefore I will not be able to access and use most of this stuff. And of course that's just security precaution to make sure that you know someone who connects your device through ADB doesn't get access to your content. So you cannot just you know, connect and do whatever you want unless your device is rooted. But there are some stuff that is open to your user. For example, you know, shell user and everybody can access storage. So storage is your internal storage. And therefore, if you would like to see what's going on inside storage, so storage self primary and voila, these are the contents of my storage. So what can we do, sorry, clear. Okay, so what can we else do here inside this ADB? Well, for example, we can list all the processes running on this device. And then I would like to maybe filter that by tech, tech your chance, just to see whether my app is executing. And you can see that indeed my app is executing right now. That's the package ID of my application. Let's just you know clear everything and execute the same command. So that's the application ID of my app. And currently it is executing and that's its process ID. And for example, I might want to kill my application, but then I get the following error, operation not permitted. Why is that? Well, because I am, I remind you, sorry, who am I? So I am a shell user, but I'm not this user who executes this application. But there is a very handy comment here. Okay, let me just show you that. Run as, and then I pass in the package ID, sorry, application ID of my app, and then I can do kill, and the process ID. And this will, where's my IPS? And this will kill the process associated with my application. Now, the caveat here is that this run as only works for debuggable APKs. Just like before, it's just a security precaution. Android creators didn't want anyone who connects uh, to your device using ADB to have access to other applications. And therefore run as will only work on debuggable applications, but it's very handy if you, for example, need to kill your application to test, save and restore a so-called process death 
and etc. And to demonstrate the last command that I want to show you in this video, I will mirror the screen of my device using screen copy command, so you see it on the right. And the command that I want you to see is input, input, sorry, input text. So input text, and then I can, for example, input uh, hello world, and then this text will just appear inside my device. And this is, of course, very handy for testing. So for example, if you need for some reason to test uh, your login flow 50 times a day, then you will not want to input manually every time, you know, the test username and the test password. So this comment makes it very easy. And of course, you can do very interesting thing with it. So for example, input text, hello, and then chain it with input key event 66. I just know by heart that 66 is go to the next line. And then input text world. And this will give me, okay, let's just input this event, input key event 66 to break the line, right? And maybe another one. And now let's input this entire comment. And you see that we print hello, uh, break line, and then world. Now, where this key event 66 comes from, this is just one of the constants defined in this key event class inside Android framework. So if you scroll down, you will see key code and then different key codes. There are key codes for individual digits. There are key codes for app switch. There are key code for, let's say, going back, etc. And each of them has the associated value. So the value that you see here is exactly the value that I need to provide to key event command. So let's uh, just look for 66 here once. Okay, so key code enter. The comment that I used is key core enter, and this comment breaks line when you input text. And that's what I used. So whenever you need to find a key code for some of the comments, just visit this key event class and find the respective number. And this pretty much concludes what I wanted to share with you about ADB in this video. The last thing that I do want to say is that ADB is a very powerful tool. So in my opinion, all Android developers should invest time into getting to know this tool and using it while you develop your applications. In some cases, like for example, testing login flow for ages and ages, whenever I needed to test login flow, I will just, you know, see it and manually input all these credentials myself. And it took a lot of time until I learned, you know, well, you can do that with ADB in just one second. <laughs> How cool is that? So I think Android developers should invest time and therefore I highly recommend that you just go and read the documentation of ADB command. You don't have to understand everything. You don't have to know all these comments by heart, but you know, just familiarizing yourself with what you can do with ADB can help you sometime in the future when you actually need this feature and then you will be aware that it just exists. So that's it for this time and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.